In our AC and DC to RF videos, we saw how it is important when you are uh, working at high frequency to have a transmission line whose characteristic impedance is the same as the source impedance and the load impedance. This is to achieve maximum power transfer. And we saw how when you go up in frequency, if this is not the case, uh, then the power transfer to the load diminishes considerably. Now we're going to have a look at some waveforms and we're going to see how they change as we uh, change the various parameters of the circuit including frequency and characteristic impedance of the transmission line. Let's redraw the schematic quickly, this shouldn't take very long, so circuit schematic, new schematic, let us call it AC to RF. We we'll then use the usual control L to fetch a uh, voltage source and uh, our resistors. So AC voltage source, then place it on the schematic, get yourself a ground connector, and then a couple of resistors in a similar fashion. Place one there and one there. And then we'll get ourselves a transmission line in a physical form. T lin P and place it on the schematic like so. We can change the name of our elements to make it clearer what they represent. So we can call this RS and we can call this RL and then we connect everything together. Let's also choose a, uh, an arbitrary length of our transmission line, let's say 50 millimeters. What we need to do next is change our source impedance and load impedance to the values that we want them to be. For maximum power transfer we need to have the same. Um, however, at radio frequency, as is specified in the notes, we usually use 50 ohms or 75 ohms. In this case we'll choose 50 ohms. Also, we can choose the uh, magnitude of our voltage to be 2 volts and this makes the calculations really quite easy because then it's divided evenly amongst the two resistors. So let's make the magnitude of our AC voltage 2 volts. So what we can do now is insert a few probes along the circuit so that we can see the source and load voltage and we can compare the two. To do this, we just click on M probe up here, which allows you to check um, voltages and currents at a specific point along the circuit. And then you need to place it on the node of one of the elements. Let's move this over here. And again, get an M probe and place it right here. So we can basically see what the voltage looks like at either side of the transmission line. Of course, the uh, voltage source will have an internal impedance of 50 ohms and hence we have to place the probe after the 50 ohm internal resistance of the uh, signal generator. Now we can get ourselves onto graphs, right click on graph, open a new one. We can call it source and load voltage. It's a rectangular graph. And then we right click, add a new measurement. In this case, we'll have to go into the nonlinear measurements, pick the voltage, and we want to see a time waveform of our voltage, so we'll choose a measurement element called V time. Now, where is this measurement going to be taken? The data source name is correct, it's the only one schematic we've got. The measurement component will have to be either VP1 or VP2. Now, we want to make sure that we know uh, which one it is that we're using, so what we can do is go back to our schematic and change the names of our probes which is a good practice so you know more or less where you are when you go and um, set up a graph so VPS will be our source and VPL will be our load so we know exactly what we're looking at if we click on the graphs again go back to adding a new measurement and we'll go back to uh, nonlinear get voltage and V time. And this time we can choose the measurement component without any ambiguity. We know that VPL is the load voltage and VPS is the source voltage. And we add another measurement, of course, for the source voltage in a similar fashion, but we just need to change the measurement element, apply, and then OK. 
Now we need to pick the measurement frequency. We need to go to project options and we'll pick just one frequency 0.3 gigahertz or 300 megahertz to start with. Click on single point, apply and OK and simulate. Now we can see in our graph that the amplitude of the source and load voltage is identical. The only difference between the two is a face, is the face. And that's normal because we've seen in the notes that the finite length of the transmission line is going to introduce uh, some kind of delay because the signal needs to propagate from one point to the other. However, this does not affect the power transfer, the uh, voltage amplitude and current amplitude enhance their product. If they change, then you affect your actual um, power transfer. But if the voltage stays the same and the current stays the same in amplitude, then that's no problem at all that there should be a delay between one and the other. Now, what happens if we go back to our schematic and open the tuner and start tuning the impedance of our transmission line? Let's say that we tune the impedance between 25 and uh, 150. Well, you can see that the source and load voltage are becoming different. Uh, however, they're not changing by a massive deal. You're losing a bit of power, but not a great deal. So let's have a look. When we go up to 150 ohms, Let's have a look at how different uh, the two waveforms are in amplitude. Let's just click on the graph, press Ctrl M, and just click on the uh, peak point of the waveform, and then and then get yourself onto there. Now we've got 1.22 on one side and 0.92 on the other side, and that translates into a difference of about. 0.3 volts. So let's remember that we've got 0.3 volts for this much of a mismatch between the characteristic impedance of the line and the source and load impedances. Now it'd be interesting to see what happens if we increase the frequency. So we go back to project options, we put 1 gigahertz there, apply and then OK, and then we simulate. OK, now you see how the effect is a lot more marked this time. So if I go back here and get the peak value of the load voltage and then I go up here and I get the peak value of the uh, source voltage you can see that one is about 1.73 and the other one is 0.65. Same thing for the other waveform. So there is a difference of 1.08 volts between one and the other whereas before we had a, just a 0.3 volts difference. So you can see that as you go up in frequency, then the actual impedance, characteristic impedance of the line, matters more and more in order to, for you to be able to deliver maximum power transfer to the load. Now, one little quirk that I'd like to show you, although I don't want you to think that you can use this to solve all your problems, is changing the length of the line to a specific value which would make it transparent. So at the moment if we open the tuner you can see we are at 150 and as we change this back a little bit towards the 50 ohms you can see that the waveforms are getting more and more similar in amplitude. Now let's just close this and uh, let's um, keep the impedance to the maximum mismatch that we can have, so 150. And let's go back to the schematic and change the length of the line. Now I'll change the length of the line to the magic value of 150 millimeters. Can you guess what this value is yet? Okay, let's see what happens. Let's go back to our graph and re-simulate. Wow, look at that. The two waveforms are exactly the same amplitude and there is a specific offset between them which is about 180 degrees. And now let's see what happens if I tune the impedance. So if I change the value of the impedance, nothing changes at all. 
the transmission line uh, actually becomes transparent. So the characteristic impedance does not matter. And that's because I've chosen that specific length of line. Let's try and do a pull this trick off again at 300 megahertz. So let's go back to our project options and replace this with 0.3, apply and OK. So we've changed our frequency to uh, 300 megahertz and now uh, let's see what happens when we uh, simulate. We don't get the same effect. Uh, that means that the uh, special length that I used before is frequency dependent. So let's go back to the schematic and see if I can pull another length out of my bag which will have the same effect. Let's say we put 500 there and simulate. Well, look at that, we've got the same thing yet again. And if we open the tuner now and change the impedance of the line, yet again, we see almost no change at all. So, the uh, length that I chose was half a wavelength. Half a wavelength uh, is a special length which, as was shown in the notes, allows you to uh, basically make the transmission line disappear. So the transmission line will have no effect on the circuit irrespective of the characteristic impedance. There is, of course, a phase shift which is due to the physical length of the line. But this phase shift is uh, unavoidable. It is to do with the fact that you uh, have a, a finite uh, speed of propagation of the signal along the line. However, make sure that you don't think that you can just solve all your problems with a, with a half-wave line because uh, often enough you will not be able to just make things go away in, in, this ma in this way. The reason for that is that your load impedance is not usually just a 50 ohm load, it's something else. So you will actually have to use your uh, transmission line to your own advantage to be able to make it look as if it was a 50 ohm impedance at the other end so that you can then have maximum power transfer.